Hey guys, it's Colin here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create some custom classes uh, for CSS in Dynamic, the theme. Now, there has been a few posts on Facebook about not being able to actually override some of the Dynamic settings, uh, CSS settings, that is, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we go, and what we want to do is actually target this heading here we've got. Uh, so if I actually, you know, go into my page builder, let's just turn off CSS here because I think that's actually on right now. But uh, let's just turn that off because I think it's overriding. And there we go. So if we go into our page builder and, you know, choose this particular heading here, what we'll notice is that this is actually a heading one style. So it's an H1 style. So what we need to do is just you know, cancel this for now. Let's go back out. I just wanted to determine whether that's an H1. So I'm going to click on done. I'm not going to change anything there because I haven't changed anything. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my custom area. As you can see, I put some custom CSS in here. So the one I want to show you right now is my blue heading. I want to target the H1 class for my blue heading. So basically I want to make the H1 blue with a custom class. So I'm going to you know, save that. Those those are in there right now. I'll go on to the other ones in a second. I'm going to go back to my services. I'm going to go to my page builder. And what you'd normally do is, you know, we'd go into this one here. Okay, click on that. We go to the advanced tab. And then the bottom of the advanced tab is a class. And I'm going to put in, you don't need to put the dots, but I'm just going to put my dash blue heading okay so that's actually the class and if I click on save that should come up with a dark blue heading but as you can see it's not doing that okay so if I click done and publish changes you can see that the custom class I put in there is not actually being applied to that setting here's the secret okay so come over to custom class and you put in here dot f l dash builder dash content Put space in there I'm going to save that and what that does is it actually identifies the my blue heading custom class within the page builder or the beaver builder content so if we go back to services press f5 to refresh that now you'll see that my Blue H1 is bold. Now, if we look at the tag here, you can see that I've got a color. This is actually blue, and the font weight is bold. So that's that. That's that. So look at this one here. My red heading H4. It's going to be a red color, and it's also going to be bold. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to target this one below here. So let's go to Page Builder, and you can add more than one custom class to an, a module. So this one here has got the H1. If I go into advanced again, you'll see at the bottom there, just put a space between them and go my red heading this time. Okay, and because I'm targeting just the H4 tag, I'm going to save that. And if we come out of here, you see that it's not been applied again. All right, so publish changes because I haven't put in to my custom CSS that first little bit of code. I need that FL Builder content, control C, control V it into there, space, save the changes. And if I go back over here again, just come down, press F5 to refresh my page. That should be nice and red. There we go. So that's what we need to do. We need to add in that FL dash builder dash content to actually target the custom CSS on the dynamic page. So one last one, I'm gonna go into this graphic here. I like to put a, maybe a shadow, a drop shadow or box shadow around that photograph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and go into events one more time, go down to the bottom class. This time I'm gonna put in my box shadow. Okay, nothing happens. Actually, there it is. It does happen. So this one actually doesn't need the flbuilder.content identifier at the beginning of the CSS on this particular one. So I click done, and there's a drop shadow. Publish changes. What I'll do, though, is I'll just actually go over there and copy that so just to make sure it does drill down and identify that. So control C, control V, space, save the changes. Okay, come back here. 
and F5, refresh the page, come back down. As you can see now, we've got custom classes all over the place. So go into the page builder again. You know, if I want to make this one the same, and target this one down here, and go into advance again. And this one, I want a my box shadow again. And click on save. And as you can see, we've got a box shadow on there too. Now, obviously, you can change the settings of what you want on the box shadow. But uh, that's the lesson for today. So the moral of the story is, if you want to add a custom class, to a Beaver Builder module when you're using Dynamic Website Builder, you need to target the actual builder CSS, the main CSS, and that is fl-builder-content. If you put that in front of your custom CSS uh, class that you created, you shouldn't have any problems pinpointing or identifying that CSS comment within Dynamic Website Builder. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great week and look forward to seeing you next time. If you like this video, please share it. And if you like this website, please tell your friends. Thanks a lot. See you now. Bye.